But let's start. So it's been about it's been three months, right? Uh, about it's been two and a half, I'd say. Two and a half, I'd say. So it's been about two and a half months since Salvation released. How are you feeling about that? I mean, okay, is that is that better? That is like, a lot better, actually. Okay, cool. All right, but as far as Salvation, I mean, it doesn't feel. It feels like it's been longer. It feels like it's been maybe four or five months. It doesn't feel like two because even the first like two weeks, it felt like a month. Just because I was trying to like keep doing this and keep doing that and keep you know performing and just making music and just you know just trying to stay productive anyway you know even though Salvation came out and just trying to make sure it's promoted right you know for that first two weeks was stressful so it felt like a month so so knowing it's two and a half months it's kind of weird I don't know so was it like a hyperbolic time chamber? Uh, what like uh <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, I, we've talked for almost, I don't think we talked a lot about when you dropped Impulse. So I'm just like, right. we've talked when you dropped the Feng Shui and just kind of curious to figure out, now that you're here at this moment in time, what was your particular goal with Salvation? And what's kind of the trajectory of what you wanted to accomplish and were you able to accomplish these goals, and what kind of immediate goals do you have upon release now? Okay, well, the thing was with that, and this is going to be kind of a segue, but you know, the thing is with Salvation was, I was going to put out something last summer, but because a lot of stuff wasn't done right, I couldn't really release it, right? So, like, I didn't want to release it in, like, the fall, you know, because it wouldn't have fit, and you guys will hear it in the summer. But, um... I decided to pretty much put that project on hold because I was like, you know, I, I got to do this right. I got to present this right, and I got to make the summer. Like, it has to be a summer thing. So, you know, around, like, the fall, like, October-ish, I was like, okay, I got to make an, I gotta make something to, I guess, tie people over in my mind. And, and you know, so I, and I have been, you know, songs like We Ain't Playing and stuff like that were already done, you know. It was just stuff I did for fun, though. I just didn't, never had an outlet to put them all out. Like, so... You know, just working on it and then just, you know, just seeing it evolve. And then with me, when I was in Atlanta, you know, that sound, that, you know, hard trap sound, but with still lyrics that no one could say, oh, man, CJ rapped on trap beats and rapped completely different. Like, no, like, if anything, you know, technically, I feel like I got better, you know, just rapping technically. And I, I really wanted to showcase that because on the summer project, I do that. The summer project's called Aloha the Hollow, by the way. Okay. But the thing is, with that, it's more of a, you know, a relaxed vibe to it. So you can't, you know, I couldn't really, you know, show off like I really wanted to at that time. You know, I was done with it. You know, it's done. You know, I have to add some tweets and some shit. But, you know, the fact that, you know, I just wanted to show people, you know, what I could just do rapping-wise. Because, you know, I did a few features here and there, but I wanted to really just give a project of it and just focus it. And I was really happy with how it came out. I, I didn't. Honestly, I didn't really expect it to, you know, be the thing that, like, broke me necessarily, right? Because yeah. I, that was honestly, like, since Impulse, that was, like, the shortest time I've ever taken on a project, like, four or five months. You know, usually I take about, like, well, usually, well, back in 2009 when I dropped all those tapes, like, it was, like, a two-month period, and then Impulse came out, like, a year later, but, or after Feng Shui, but usually, but I guess there's a misconception that it took me two years to make Salvation, and that's not true. It only took me like five or six months. But so I, so I wasn't saying, oh my goodness, Salvation is going to be the, oh, you know, I was just like, it's going to be something that's going to tie people over and people are really going to enjoy as a project. But what I really feel about, what I really believe, is you know going to be the shit that like makes things ridiculous is a long and hollow. So like so I'm really I really have like my 100 percent faith in that right now, and you know I, I'm just glad salvation and just using it to do other shit. You know I, I really wanted to kind of you know be able to get my beats out there more. You know get you know get my get my sound out there more so that when I really drop this shit I can you can see the contrast of it. And, you know right. 
So I really wanted to to just get let people know, hey, you know, I'm still here. You know, I'm still here. This is what I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? This isn't what I'm doing. This is where I'm at right now, you know. And I, let me explain to you what's been going on type shit. I liked it. It was because it was on some, you know, I could, I could kind of tell my story in the past year and a half, two years. And, you know, it, it, but keep it vague enough to where I can elaborate more on it in a future you know right um, which actually leads to a question that i was going to say it for later but it kind of came up early is that how uh, much is this album a really a product of your time in atlanta a lot of like it, it's yeah if it, it, i were to you know go back and you know 10 years from now i was like oh man i remember that one part that i did salvation if you want to know about how it was living in atlanta listen to salvation you know like that because that Honestly, that was where my mind was. Like, besides when he played, like, every other song I did, I wrote there, I produced there, I recorded there, you know, except for, you know, maybe, like, Cliffhanger. But, no, I made that beat there. Like, I, I made a lot of, like, a lot of that was beat, were beats I made from just being down there. And I made so many more beats that, you know, are going to other people's projects and hear it, you know, like that more you know, trap sound, but, you know, with the same shit I usually do with the synths and stuff, like, making it sound, like, really cool with that, you know, just sonically, so. Right, and it's funny because I remember, I think, is it over a year ago now when you and I were first talking uh -huh. about your kind of decision to kind of do more trap stuff, and you were like, I want to do happy trap. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's a lot Apollo. Oh, that's all, okay. Cause yeah, yeah. It's yeah. funny because I... Yeah, I, I one of the things I wanted to ask you is that I've listened to the tra Trap songs I kind of revi revisited today, and I was just like, I wouldn't say they're happy. You do have your touch of the sin, so I just kind of figure out... Yeah. So you basically just said the happy Trap is next step. Next one. This was just me really vending, so I didn't care if it was happy, sad, <laughs> or I just wanted to... You know, say what I had to say, but you know, even though they were like, I don't know, I just like the the the, the general. I don't, I don't really. I'm not. I'm, I'm a fan of the gritty ass trap beats. You know, with the low basses and like the you know thick ass synths that really make you just go like you know. <laughs> but you know, I like more. I like. I, I kind of like the lighter stuff. The you know, like it has more. It has. It has less of a violent undertone to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, like you know, it's it's good, like, as far as trap music is concerned, like, I feel like it's good trap music. And, I, and like, and not necessarily on some old, I sell drugs, but, you know, I feel like it's good music that can be played in the whip at loud volumes, you know, around, just driving around. But it's not, it doesn't have, like, a negative, you know what I mean? And yeah. Like a, you, know, you know, you you don't you don't get you don't get a bad vibe from it. You know, I, and and that's what I want. So just to just to almost throw people, not necessarily throw people off, but you know, it's just like it's just a different type of sound to it. You know, except for Dogma. Dogma, I kind of made that on some evil shit. I was like, <laughs> you know, I'm like yeah, 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 yeah. Like you know, they're gonna feel me on this, but but even then, like, I try to make some songs darker than others, but it's in general. Um, I wanted it to be more less threatening, tra <laughs> you know, trap funny stuff. Just to you know, keep it to keep it keep it honest. You know, why would I make some gritty ass, hard ass trap music and go on it? It's like, what's up, me? Right. So let's talk about the name of the album because I I tried to understand and I was kind of figure out. I'm trying to understand where you're coming from. And the way that I was able to kind of take it from, and I'm curious to see what you really have to say, is that it sounds like the theme of salvation is kind of find solace in the meaning of, the, of your commitment to making music. That's what it's kind of sounding like, but I wasn't sure if that's kind of the worldview you wanted to communicate or more so where you were at during the recording process. I like that. That's close, but I like that. I, I like that a lot. That, it makes sense, and I guess it kind of intertwines with, I guess, the... The theme I was going for with it, you know, I really, you know, just, first of all, I got a, a lot more involved with God, you know, just from, you know, pretty much being on my own and stuff like that, I really got to, you know, 
kind of soak in everything, you know, the world, you know, for what it was, like, you know, no shelter, you know, not not shelter, but no comfort of of mommy and daddy, you know what I mean? No, right. no, if I fuck up, you know, I can just go to my parents and everything will be okay. No, it's like, you're really out here by yourself, you know, and, and even though I was out there with a friend, you know, when... You know, when he's not there, I'm by myself, like, in a whole different place, you know. So it's like, I really got to connect with God more just on a on a spiritual level, just to, you know, really appreciate it and really, not, really live it, you know, as opposed to just, you know, just being, you know, just, you know, doing the easy thing, you know, taking the easy way out on some things, you know. Really, like, and, and like, you know, some things I, I would endure more just because I was like, you know, you know, something's you know, something's coming. Something greater is coming. Like you know, and and that's where you know a few songs like like S and A, S and A. Right. Uh, yeah, that was a true story. And you know, when that lady came in there and said all that, and her husband came in there and said all that, it really, you know, it really made me it really reassured what I had in my mind about everything. You know, and I was just like, I think you know, it's, and I gotta you know. Like, cause I'm really, you know, I'm really, like you say with the, you know, that you're really committed, I'm really committed with the music. But it's like, this is, you know, this is the shit I go through for this shit, you know? Like, and whether or not, you know, moving to Atlanta was a good or bad decision, however people may look at it, you know, I felt that, in general, just the whole, just my whole mind state and the shit I gained from it, like, as far like, on a spiritual level, well, the shit that I'll be for the rest of my life. So, and and just me going up all that, you know, just that transition, that commitment, you know, really made me, you know, learn things from I saw through as an artist, you know, from, you know, I, I guess someone, someone would say following my dreams. So, you know, whether or not it worked out, doesn't really matter. What matters is, like, I, I learned something. And, you know, with that title, I just wanted to, Show people where my head was, you know, like, it was just Jesus, 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 anyway. So, and, you know, it kind of worked with TJ the Genesis, so. Right. <laughs> you know, so, I mean, whenever I show people that, my, like, you know, the hard copies, they'll be like, is that a Christian album? And I'm like, no. And sometimes I feel like I have to say, fuck no, just to make it a bigger point, like, no, like, just really no. But not nothing against Christian albums. I wanted to be a hip-hop uh, Christian artist at one point. But, but yeah, fucking, people think it's a Christian album, but it's kind of funny, and I don't know, sometimes I feel people don't take it seriously that way, because of that, but it's whatever, if you listen to it, you already know, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's not a Christian, <laughs> like, yeah, I'm scared to let my mom hear it, because I curse so much, <laughs> but she heard what you playing, like, it was just like, I, was, I, was, I wasn't, I didn't like that. <laughs> but then I gotta ask, it's like, you... I don't know if I'm reading a little bit too much into all of it, but it's like it felt like you kind of also purposely did a couple of, like with the whole Sarah and Abraham and Ox Blood and stuff like that. I'm getting Old Testament references in my head, yes, and I'm yes. like, and I'm like, throughout that year, as you say, you kind of go close to God. Was that kind of where you were at in terms of reading and stuff, or am I just like way too deep for, for the well, intro? There were certain things like you know. Cause like I said before, I was you know I was just making songs, you know I didn't really have any direction with it, so I really wanted to try to go with the direction that I feel would see fit with the current situation, you know, you know just dealing with those circumstances. I mean, okay, you know what I do do pretty well on trap beats, so fuck it, you know why not you know make more of a thing. The thing is, and just a quick side note, I wouldn't even call it a trap tape because there's only like four or five songs that are really trap like, right? You know like. So when people say, "Oh, it's more of a trap," tale, I'm like, "Yeah, it is." But you know, like songs like Affliction and and you know, S and A and Jaded and Painless. These are not trap songs. These are not hard hitting songs. I mean, they hit somewhere, but anyway. But just the whole, all the references like Sodom's destruction. Like right. when I was starting to gain a direction with it, you know, I was really first of all, I made that like Sodom's destruction. I made that beat a really long time ago. Like, like I made that beat. Before I made, I can do it too. Snap. Yeah, that beat is old. <laughs> that beat is really old, you know. But the thing is, I was listening to it, and I was like, dude, this could totally 
like, you know, fit this vibe, you know, and just how hard it was hit. I'm like, dog, this is, I just really wanted to say something, you know, I just really wanted to send a message on it, but, like, make it short and to the point. So, I was, you know, I thought of Sodom, you know, just, you know, because I forgot what, what city it was that got destroyed, right. you know, the flames of everything. And also wanted to make it, you know, a reference to just my life, you know, like, you know, you know, regardless of the, of the verse, the chorus, you know, like, and I ain't ever looking back, you know, like how, you know, God told, you know, his wife, just don't look back and she turned to a pillar and song. Like, you know what I'm saying? I don't want to, I was looking at it as, you know, I can't look back because, you know, it's whatever, like, you know, I have to, I have to keep it moving, you know, and that's why I was trying to, you know, stay, because even though I was saying all that stuff about, oh, F everybody and blah, 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 it's like, you know, I got to keep it moving, you know, so I'm not going to, look back at what I may regret or, you know, shit like that. But just in general, the whole feel, like, like the as the title started getting more and more in-depth, uh, not in-depth, but, but I, want, I wanted, I wanted the, the words to have a certain impact on people, like, because I think it like, like, affliction. Like, I didn't want it to be a word, like, you know, uh, like tribulations or something like that. I didn't want it to be a word like that. Cause tribulations would have worked, cause I, that's what it was called at first. It was supposed to be called tribulations. But I don't know. I didn't want to. I felt like I was Jack and Lupe, so <laughs> I was like, I was like, uh, I'm gonna make it call, uh, you know, affliction, you know, something like that, right. just to kind of give it that, you know, I don't know. Well, well I'm not, I can't really worry, right? But yeah, just I don't know. I just wanted a certain. I just wanted a I, I, certain. I don't want to say aesthetic, but a certain thing to your eye that makes you say, okay. I just like, I, I like how people read the titles and they're like, oh, wow. Like, you know, like this one lady said, when she saw Sodom's Destruction, she was like, oh my goodness, like this album has some crazy titles on it. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, it sure does. It sure does. I took my time. Yeah. Yeah. I have a few kind of lyric stuff to discuss with you. As well, so I gotta I gotta start with this because it, it felt so appropriate. I'm a Thunder fan, but I'm not messing the heat. What, what's going on, son? Man, all I had to say, all I had to say is the the Heat better get the patience tomorrow. That's all I gotta say because I have a lot of Heat fan friends and I love them to death. But when we get to talking about basketball, and you know. They, they just say, oh, we bust y'all ass last year, or we got the rings. You know, I, then I'm just like, I can't argue with this, so I always lose. Even though I can have stats, you know, stats. Your stats for a season can't be the ring, you know? No. And you, like, you have the shittiest stats of the season, but if you if you get to the – it's like if Memphis got to the finals and they, like, won it. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, they may not have been had a good record as the Thunder or the Heat, but, you know, they won it, so it doesn't matter who had the best record. You know? So – when that happened, man, when the Thunder went home, I wasn't I wasn't that bad. I didn't cry like last year, but I, I was upset. I was just like, uh, you know, this really sucks, you know. But I, I knew from the bottom of my heart once Westbrook left, I saw how we played against the Grizzlies in the first three games, just how they had us in the pain and how they had us, you know, uh, just, just on a on a down low type aspect, they yeah. really, they really kind of. I don't want to say expose the Baca and Perkins because they did play really well. Perkins played with a lot of heart, and so did Ibaka. So I can't. I'm not taking anything away from them, but it's just that the fact, you know, Gasol is versatile, Zebo versatile. Yeah. You know what I'm saying, and without, you know, Russell Westbrook to really lead that with, you know, KD and Ibaka and Perkins, and you know, and even just Westbrook and get it to Cephalosha for the threes or the, you know, mid-range or to get it to Kevin yeah. Martin. Like, dude, like, I feel like we, that's why we lost it. And I'm not taking anything away from D. Fish or yeah. Reggie Jackson. I think Reggie Jackson, this is huge for Reggie Jackson because everyone's saying, oh, they need to get another point guard after this because if Westbrook keeps going, it goes down again, you know, then who's going to really lead them? But Reggie Jackson really got some experience points. Like, right. you know, D Fish, D Fish has five rings. You know what I'm saying? He knows how to lead a championship team. You know, because you know, when if whatever him and Kobe switched with the one or two position, or whatever, like D Fish was out there passing it to you know Kobe and passing yeah. it to Shaq and getting this ball, you know, and even making shots himself, making threes himself. 
So I think Reggie Jackson got a lot of experience. So I think he's going to be he's going to be a problem this year. I think he's going to be a problem this year. Like Westbrook's going to get a lot more runs just because they're trying to watch his knee. Right. So Reggie Jackson can really show off this year. I feel like. So as far as the Heat, I like them as a team. They're a good team, but they got to beat these Pacers, man. The Pacers yeah. out here looking like the Fab Five, <laughs> and you know they're yeah. just like the. The, the it's like they're like a college team, yeah. you know, playing against the big dogs, like for real, and going to Game Seven. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like that's crazy. Like it's exciting. I mean, it's it's very exciting. Yeah, and I want to apologize to the listeners who felt like we just got into a b-ball breakdown halfway yeah. through the interview, but it's just like I knew that you meant that lyric seriously, so I just had to ask, <laughs> had to call you on that, dude. So seriously, like <laughs> I like the heat. Right. I, and I'm not going to go skip Bayless, Stephen A., but, you know, the Heat better beat the Pacers because, honestly, the Pacers versus the Spurs would be a good would be a good series, but no one will watch it, and that would suck. Right. Because I feel like it would be good anyway. No, I, mean, I would watch no. it regardless. Huh? I'd watch it regardless. Oh, yeah, it's the finals. You have to watch <laughs> it. But, you know, like, it's just jeez. No. You know, the, 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 the Heat got to come. The Heat got to come with it, man. That's all I got to say. Now, on a more serious note, I have another joking question afterwards, but I'd get get a little bit. Is that what was the writing process for Painless like? Because I mean, uh, I, I I will be. I mean, it feels weird saying it because I heard the track and I was just like, I feel bad, because this is the best track you wrote, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah. And I remember when we were talking Impulse, you said something that was very interesting to me. You said, I got in the process of writing. As soon as the emotions hit me, so I, I forgot yeah. what the situation was, but you said like you as soon as you felt it, you went, you wrote, you didn't write necessarily to get the lyrics, you write, you wrote to get the emotion. But the thing with Painless is that it's two sides to it, and I was just like, how was your writing process for a song like that, and how does it even feel to bear so much transparently with us? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, let me let me this let me say this now. Painless is painless. I am my father is still alive. You know, like, like you know, everything is okay. I'm okay. Like, no, right. no one in my family killed him. So I just got to say that because you know, some people were texting me saying like, "Damn, dude, I didn't know, man. Sorry." And I'm like, "Wait, that, that was fictional." But the thing is, with painless, the first part of painless, I made that be, I made that be two years ago. I made that be November 25th. I remember I was, I was, I was in Georgia. <laughs> That's why I, I was in I was visiting family in Georgia and I made right. that I made like five beats that night. That was one of the beats I made. And I really wanted to go for like a J Electronica type feel to it, you know. And I was like, you know, let me tell a story like but like a good story, like you know, like you know J Electronica style, you know. But you know, and just really showcase for my versatility, you know. That's what I really wanted to show. And then you know, just kind of go into a topic that is touchy, just but just so I could you know really. Get people to pay attention to it. Not like I'm some attention scheme type shit. Right. You know? Now the thing is, the, that whole first part. The what are you to say to a man with a blade in his hand? Was me up to the way I said. You know, uh, what you gonna tell him? No. What you gonna tell him? Stop. What you gonna take it as a joke? What you gonna tell the cop? You know that whole part. I wrote up from the beginning to that part and didn't touch that song for like four or five months. So that shit was like those first eight bars I wrote. You know the part where I was on, like, but it's not because that face is done. He had came to work. He, had, I wrote that way after, like, like way after, and the, what happened with that kept me going about it was there was just stuff I was going through in my head and shit. You know, not necessarily me trying to commit suicide, but right. just so I could have something to draw from. And also a friend of mine, you know, uh, yeah, like I just I you know I got some news about a friend of mine who had apparently committed suicide, you know? Mm-hmm. So it was like, and not necessarily like someone who came over my house every day, but, you know, someone who I really knew and really respected, you know, and the fact that it went down like that, you know, it made it, it made it, it made it mean something else to me. So when I got that news, that's when I finished writing it, you know, when I recorded it, you know, I liked the song as it was, as that, but the thing was, you know, my friend I was living with, he was like, dog, that's a cool story and all, but it's like, 
if you just threw that on salvation, it would just be a random story, you know? He's like, you gotta make it, he's like, you gotta make a part two. You have to make a part two to it. You have to, like, you yeah. know, there has to be something else. So, you know, I kind of marinated on it, and I almost didn't want to do that. I was almost going to save it and just say, you know what, uh, no. But I, I made that I made that second beat, like, <laughs> lucky day. It was on November 11th, 11 And, and like, I just watched the Sons of Anarchy season finale where they played that song I sampled, and it, like, hit. Like, just the emotion I was trying to go for. Like, when I was watching it in the episode and, like, people were getting shot in the head and shit, it was, like, all this crazy stuff going on, like, in the show. I was like, dude, this song that's playing in the background is, is the exact emotion I was try- I want to go for. Like, right. for, if I were to say, do a second part to Payless, I'm going to try and see what I can come up with with it. And then, um, you know, with that, I was like, I feel like I have to write it from a different perspective. You know, obviously, and I, I didn't know what to say. You know, whether his wife or, you know, I was like, I was like his children because his children. I was like talking about his children hate him. And I was like, you know what? I'll elaborate more on the child side, specifically the older son side, who can really understand and really soak in what's going on, as opposed to his like two, three year old sister who's kind of just like la la la, you know, <laughs> you know. So, you know, and he's really. Oh, sorry. Uh, you know, he's really at a point where he can really digest information. You know, he can really, at a point in his life, you know, when he's like 11 to where puberty started hitting. So he, there's a lot of shit his father needs to be here for, you know. Right. Or just, you know, and because and his mother died in the, in, the, in, the, in the accident, you know, like he has no one to go to. He can't talk to his grandma about this shit, you know. So I just really wanted to, to, to say, and that's also a, a second side to how I felt about the whole situation about my friend. Because right. it's like, even though, you know, I love my friend to death, you know, like, I had I had to say, you know, what's really real, you know, like, how we really feel, you know. Because whenever I hear about people who commit suicide, like, you know, everyone's just like, oh my God, you know, like, Amanda Ty, like, everyone just said, do like you know what I'm saying she was just being selfish just because she didn't have it her way you know blah blah everyone has all this negative stuff to say along with the positive like say in bullying and stuff like that but you know just the selfish factor of it I wanted to push out of people just that that you know kind of what we're all thinking but we don't want to say like if one of our friends committed suicide you know we don't want to say damn they were fucking selfish and they not think about how the fuck we felt you know I mean that gets spewed around in general conversation about it but, you know, like, your initial reaction to it was like, oh, my God, my friend is dead, you know. As a more, more bad thing in your stomach saying, no, that was selfish, like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, right. like you know, we all have feelings, too. We all, like, like we, all have to, we all have shit to deal with, too. You know what I'm saying? Like, now you're, you just added something more to my already heavy burden. You know what I mean? I already had to walk around with a chip on my shoulder in general, just, you know, mentally, and then this shit happens, and it makes me, like, it, like, fucks me up. It makes me, like, want to go even harder and just to, you know, it, it's just one of those things that's just, I don't know. It, it's just it's just one of those things where I, I, uh, I had to elaborate on it so because so, I, I wanted people to feel how I felt, and I know people feel that way anyway. It's just don't talk about it a lot, so... That's what I really wanted to go for with Payless. And I just put myself, I just kind of put myself there. I was trying to, you know, it was weird, but I just put myself there and just tried to, like, you know, but but more so, like, I was writing a script as opposed to saying, oh, my goodness, you know. I was like, if I were to write a script, you know, about some shit like this, how would I have the son's dialogue, you know, action, you know. Right. And, you know, and, and that's how I wanted to go about it. So I was I was proud of, the, I, I'm really, really proud of the part that, of it, so it took a while, but I'm glad. Okay. Yo, so two other things that are kind of stepped out to me, and much more on a lighter note. Uh, I got, I still got to ask you, how in the world you came up with the Delfino Plaza reference? I'm, st- I, I still think you're on the, I still say it to this day, and I know, I've listened to a lot of the anime 
hardcore fans who spit. Uh, but I still don't think anyone else has ever pulled a Mario Sunshine reference that deep. So I gotta ask you, where did that come from, really? <laughs> First of all, thank you. Thank you, because this is exactly... Okay, remember when we talked and you said, and you said, man, you know, people really like you on a nerd. Are you going to have any video game references? <laughs> right. You know, have some video game songs. And, you know, the only real video game sample in that was Beginning to Forever. But that even that didn't sound like yeah, I'm a nerd, as opposed right. to, like, you know, the more 8-bit sound I was kind of going for. But when I, when you say, when people say, when you just said that, like, it's like, you know, you've heard a lot of anime about average bit, or, like, you know, people who just had those type of references. Like, I wanted to, I really wanted, with that line, I just wanted to say, okay, like, I, I know this shit. <laughs> this is my shit, you know, like. But it's one of those things. It's one of those things. I remember actually the other night, my sister, my sister had some friends over, right? And you know, we were, you know, we they we started a bonfire, and you know, I was uh, working on some music, and they were like, "Hey, you can rap," you know. Their friends like, "Hey, you rap?" And I'm like, "Yeah." So I played this new beat I was working on, and I just rapped like um, the second verse of Loco to it. And, you know, when I said the Delfino Plaza line, and I just saw all the, you know, because these are like, you know, my sisters are 17, so these are like 18, 17 year old kids. So when they, when they played Super Mario Sunshine, I was probably like 12. They were probably like 8, you know, right. so going to like, when I say Delfino Plaza, they were just like, oh my goodness. Like, <laughs> you know, like, this man just kind of went deep. But that's what I wanted to do. Like, I, I, I don't, I don't, I'd rather make one, you know, I get not necessarily hard hitting, but one good as video game or anime a punch to you know to 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 really say ooh as opposed to saying yeah I got my sword like Link you know my bitch like Peach and her pussy pink like what like what? <laughs> but you know like people you know people just really just rap video game shit yeah. rap all anime shit it's yeah. like. It's cool, but it's like one of those annoying theme songs, you know. It's like, okay, we get it. You like anime, okay? Like, okay, keep keep it moving. Like, it's like Jay Z rapping now. Like, okay, we get it. You know the president, okay? <laughs> ne- <laughs> you know? Next next topic, you know, like. So I, I just really wanted, you know. So I'm, I'm glad you appreciate that line because, you know, I just really want to just put it out there. It, it, just, it just went with the Ryan scene anyway because right. I didn't, you know. Whatever, and then Viva La Rosa. And when I listen to that song, I find, like, it's kind of what I think that you did best in terms of taking the trap sound and then making it on your own. Because I remember still texting mm-hmm. you where I flipped, I was like, wait, wait, wait what? You sampled the phone ca- call me, maybe? Wait. <laughs> I was just kind of curious what gave you the idea to do that. Of, call like, me, maybe? Yes. I wanted to be a dick, honestly. I wanted to say, I, there are certain songs I sample just to be a dick. And sometimes, and I like that about myself that I would rap, that when I want to be a dick, when I make beats in my and I think in my head, I'm doing this to be a dick right now. Just to really, like, you know, uh, highlight certain things and put more emphasis on certain things that other people wouldn't. Like, I'm playing. But, like, that beat would, like, you know, once again, something... Uh, what I get, and it goes with Atlanta because I made that be, you know, when I first went down there, like when I flew down there and actually looked for an apartment the night before that plane flight, you know, that flight I made that be, you know, like on some, I made like, you know, I just really wanted to sample a song that was like really happy and really like stupid and hey, I just made, you know, just really general stupid, not stupid, but just you know, the white girl jiggy jam, you know? <laughs> you know, hey, I just met you. And this is, you know, I just wanted to sample something stupid like that just to see if I can make it hard. And then, you know, and then when people realize I, I didn't want to make the sample too obvious until the chorus so that people are just like, you know, really going hand to it and then they realize in the chorus, oh, shit. <laughs> you know, I, it's, I've been rocking in this song. But, you know, that's what I really wanted to do. And I did, it was another... There's another song I did that was on there. I think it was Shinobi. I sampled this Mike Snow song, but I did it because one of my friends, one of my, my uh, you know, C Major, shout out C Major, one of my, my old roommate, you know, and, my, and one of my best friends, you know, when we were uh, rooming together, 
you know, I would always play Mike Snow, and I'm like, dog, he like, man, I don't fuck with this. And I'm like, dude, it's tight, though. I mean, he liked it. But, you know, yeah. He was like, stop playing it all the time. And uh, I was just like, dog, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sample a Mike Snow song, and you're going to fuck with it really hard. You know, and he's all like, yeah, yeah, whatever. But, you know, like I told him, like, a month after, I was like, yeah, hey, you, I was like, you like that Shinobi beat? You know, it was Shinobi. I was like, you like that Shinobi beat? And he's all like, yeah, man, that's where it goes. I'm like, yeah. I said with Mike Snow. <laughs> and then when I played it for him, he was like, you motherfucker, no. <laughs> he was so mad. And it was, I just like, I, I just did it to be a dick. But that, that, that's all he needed to say. You want to talk about also sampling MASH? MASH, uh... Hold, hold on. Cause I know you said that was like see, two years ago. Yeah, see, well, I was, in, I was in Georgia with my family, you know, my, this is, you know, you know, if, we, if I fell asleep with the TV on, you know, and, you know, whatever my aunt was watching the day before, it, you know, pops up, so not necessarily what she was watching, but the channel, but that yeah. was on. And, you know, I heard the song, and I'm just like, that sounds really creepily good, you know, like eerie. I was like, I like that. I was like, I'm going to sample that. But I was like, but, you know, I tried, you know, when I tried to make the beat, I tried to do the little chopping, like, you know, you know, try to make like a, I guess, you know, chop it like Primo would or something like that, like just really chop it up. And I was like, no, I don't like that. I was like, I really just like how it goes and just, you know, I was like, I'd rather just rap on that, that, you know, just kind of like, but I was like, but you know, that's why I came up with the J Electronic. Uh, when I was thinking about J Electronic, like, I was like, how would he go on this, you know? Right. And I was like, you know, he'd probably have like a, little, a fast storytelling flow. I'm like, okay, I'm going to try and see what I can come up with. And, you know, I just tried to add some filters in it to make it sound sexy, but, you know, it, it was a really simple beat. And, you know, yeah. And that's, and that's what, and, and that's more what I'm on now, like, as a side note, as far as the music I'm making now, because, like I said, like, you know, the project is coming out in the summer, in, like, July, that project's already done, you know? Like, that project's almost, you know, it's pretty much on this last stages, so, you know, I'm not really, you know, rushing, because I have a lot of time with it, mm -hmm. but, you know, and it's just literally just, like, a few harmonies and shits for being done. So, but the shit I'm really working on, like, my 10th project is, like... It's, it's, it's tight. Like, it's really tight. Like, I really hope, I don't know how Mahalo does what it's supposed to do or what I believe it can do so that when I drop that 10th project, like, it'll, like, solidify. You know, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. You know, when, like, people just, you know, really start coming out and then, like, they hear the one project, like, okay, okay, that's cool. Kind of like Chance the Rapper's Acid Rap. Like, you yeah. know, people fuck with the 10-day mixtape, but with that, people were just like, oh, my God, I see why I really fuck this, man. Like, I'm glad I heard this. And, you know, even with, you know, like, Big Sean, you know, people heard Finally Famous 1, and was like, okay, this is cool. And then I heard Finally Famous mm -hmm. 2, like, okay, this is getting better. I, I like where this is going. And then that's when he started getting big, and then right. Finally Famous 3 came out, and he was like, everyone's like, oh, shit. You know, and that's when, you know, everyone stopped. And even, like, with Christian Orange, he was like, I, I, I hope I can make my 10th project the one that people can make it my Christian Orange shoes or my, uh, you know, so far gone, huh? like you're so far gone, or yeah, my uh, so far gone, or or my uh, next table about, about nothing. nothing, or my uh, you know what I'm saying. I, just, I, 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 I really, I really want like I don't like I'm really happy. Like I'm just trying. Right now, I'm just trying to get videos done for everything, like for all that. But as far as why, why not talk about videos anyway? But <laughs> as far as as far as this, like I said, that my sound is more like that on some. I'll take a sample and not really do that much to it, but what I'm saying on it is more prominent and like I really want it just to replicate the groove that I got from sampling. For example, like um, like Girls, Girls, Girls by Jay Z. You know what I'm saying? That mm -hmm. beat is really simple. Or Dear Summer, you know what I mean? Or songs like uh, you know just those like really subtle as chill but but they they improve, you know evoke emotion you know right. and i was like i, I really want to you know just find stuff like that and you know not necessarily be lazy with it do a little bit of shit to it and make it sound so you know it's less that the beat is simple but more so i'm saying some real shit to a really groovy ass sample like 
I can't wait till I can start putting that out. And even my original, even my all original productions, is like, I, 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 I'm, I'm kind of calming down. I'm, I'm trying. I'm on some grown man shit right now. Like for real, like I'm on some like grown man suit and tie shit. Now, I don't know. Go to the club, yeah, put on your cologne type shit. But you know, something, <laughs> <laughs> you know, something you can play around your parents. Right. You know what I mean? Like something that they can say, okay, just because of the samples, like. <clears throat> I remember I played my mom's with, like when we were driving when I was um driving to see some of her family like she was in the car with me you know we were driving from Atlanta to her family out in Macon you know, an hour away from Atlanta you know I had my iPod plugged in and, you know like you know I was on shuffle and, like a few of the beats came up and my mom was just like is this a such and such sample like who made this I'm like I made this and she was just like this is what you're doing now? She's like, damn. She's like, you know, you know, this is way different from Impulse. Like, you know what I mean? And she's like, whoa. Like, she's like, I like this. She's like, email me this beat. I like this beat. You know, and just stuff like that. Like, I'm really just trying to bring those grooves and, you know, do them a certain way and make them sound even better, you know? Like, I don't want to spoil too much. Because right. like, I'm, like, really, I'm, like, really excited. Like, it's like, the music is, like, 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 mm-hmm. fuck it, I'm going to just say it. Like, for example, like, no, I'm not, I'm not going right. to say it. Save the surprises. Save the surprises. We can have multiple. Oh, Clearly, I can see we're going to have multiple interviews this year. So, <laughs> you Okay, can cool. But uh, all I got to say is just, no, I, t- I can, if it's simple as hell, like, I, I made it better. Like, I just, man, on some random shit, dog, I, I really want to work with Beyonce. <laughs> you got to explain that one to me. That's, that, that's a little bit random right now. <laughs> No, because of what I was thinking about when I sampled, but, like, I don't, I've been having dreams about it, dude. I feel like it can happen. Like, I know it can happen, but I don't know, dude. It's just, I've been having some weird dreams lately, and not necessarily, like, weird, like, um, you know, all creepy or, or some demons in the background yeah. type shit. It's like, like, these are dreams that I've always had, but, you know, they're, they're, they're making a lot of sense. Like, you know, dreams are like, you know, you know. Being in the studio with Kanye or being in the studio with Pharrell, you know, I'm, I'm really having dreams like this, like, like every other night. Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like something's about to happen, dude. Like, I don't know what it is. I don't know what's coming, but I feel like it's coming soon. But I, I don't know. I just feel like something's about to happen, dude. Like, so I'm just really trying to just brace myself right now and just trying to stay prepared because it's like I just feel I don't know. I just I just I just keep having these visions, man. Like. And it's it's not and they don't they're not like regular just you know dumbass thoughts like you know these are like really really things I can see happening just off of you know just 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 karma working its magic you know so I don't know that's all I gotta say that's what, so if something <laughs> happens in like a month or two I call it, it. all right I got you <laughs> and two other real questions I have for you now is that one of I recognize your longest song on this was about six minutes. And I remember, I think you tweeted Dominic a while back, or you and you and Panama had a discussion online about a track on Impulse, which was like near 10 minutes. And you were like all regret about making the song that ridiculously long. And I can see that you seem to tone it down here. Is there, do you intend to ever make something that long again? And what was it? I mean, I'm not I, sure if it was necessarily as conscious on this one, but yeah, I mean, it's I wouldn't I would do it I would do it again I can do it like you know like because I I really because I didn't want salvation even with salvation I didn't want salvation to be because aside from that they're all three to four minute <clears throat> songs that are just you know mainly braggadocious as a like you know thinking of like not salvation but like we ain't playing you know loco. Um, not, not necessarily braggadocious content wise, but flow wise. So I was like, mm-hmm. I need to make one song on here that's like long as shit. You know, the longer than all the rest of ones. You know, something with some like real substance. And not to say some of the other ones don't, but something was like a bigger message. You know, right. than, than just what I'm going through. You know, and I was like, I gotta make one of those. Like, you know, I gotta make one. So I, I, it's not. That I I was I'm afraid not not I know you didn't say afraid but you know not that I, I can't do a long song or I'm afraid to do a longer song like that 
but more so like I'm just picking my battles with it. Like I, right. I, I, if, if if it fits a theme, oh, I'll, I'll make a ten minute song, you know. But just like I'm, I'd make a thirty second song, like if, if if it's perfect as it is, then damn it, I'll, I'll do it. But you know, I I I I'll do it again soon. I feel like it's just maybe not this next project though. Not, not the uh, the tenth one. A lot of miles is going to be shorter. It's going to be an EP, but okay. the the uh, the next one after that is like it's probably not going to happen. So I'm like that just because the the, the four minute ones will do their jobs. Like trust me, just just trust me. Um, <laughs> rounding out, in ter- by the way, I'm mad at you for be- getting all those awesome Arizona. Sponsored, not sponsored, but clearly Arizona clothing. I almost tried oh, to buy man. myself a sweatshirt. It was gone within like the next it week. It was gone. <laughs> Dude. My friend, okay, my friend, my friend D, he's, he actually was with the Taco Bell, but he got the Arizona hoodie too. The same way I had. Right. And uh, my friend Matt got one too. Shout out Matt McGee and Grand Fam. But yeah. Like he got one too, and I'm just like, you know, at first something was like, oh man, damn you guys for getting it. But it's, but in the same token, like when those shits, when those shits like were not available anymore, like I would look at them like, hey, we we came up, like you know, like you know, we came up on some on a really tight hoodie that no one's ever gonna get you now because you know, unless they like get some high position of power to take to, to be able to get one made for them. But like, I don't know, I. I and, oh, and the uh, Pina Colada one. That one is so sick. And I I wish if, if my computer, if my, other, if my other computer wasn't broken, I'd show you my Arizona stickers I have. Like, I have, like, these, and they're not, like, just regular dumbass, like, Supreme stickers. Yeah. They're, like, 3D. They're kind of bumpy. Yeah. And it's, like, I have, like, the Lucho Mango one. I have a, a Lemon Tea one, and I have a Green Tea one on the back. Right. I also have a bunch of wristbands, one, I think. Like these, like like live strong type bands, right? You know something like that. These aren't it. This is just a live strong mm-hmm. because you know free Lance Armstrong. But um, <laughs> <laughs> but and this one says eat wise and exercise. I found it at my job last year. Right. I worked at a summer camp, so I was like, okay, I, I can I can look at eat wise and exercise. But I have a few. I have Arizona ones. The ones that say I love big cans. Uh, they're like they're a little bigger, but they have. I got like the pack. It's like a yellow one, a black one. A white one, a teal, and a, a, a green one. Wait, or a pink one, I mean. It was just like five different colors. And like, it was cool to accessorize with those every once in a while. I feel like a little girl, but sure. I'm not a little girl. But it was just like, just having those little bracelets. Like, okay, I'm going to wear the pink one today because it, it kind of matched more of what I was wearing or what I was going for. If I wore like a white t-shirt, I wear like the pink one and like the green one. So it's just like, okay. You know, you know so it's I, like, yeah. Arizona bracelet, it's cool. And then I had this keychain, this like sick. It's not, it was like gum. It was like gummy kind of, of keychain. It was pretty cool just to wear that with like, you know, like my keychain. You know, just yeah. and have it on in the keys. Like yeah. So, so I was I was really into it. <laughs> so I got to say quickly for those who didn't understand why I made the Arizona <laughs> reference, I'm still. It's it, how, what, how long ago did you and M Tree release that track? Two thousand and nine. Uh, I don't. I think it was 2010. Right. I think it was 2010 when uh, Immaculate Dopeness came. Right. Out. So just for those who don't know, he and M Trey dropped a track on Immaculate Dopeness, talking about Arizona. And then <laughs> when he dropped Impulse, he got you got Arizona to tweet your video because you had the yeah, big, had the sweatshirt yeah. on. So you'll be so the first sick. rapper sponsored by Arizona if he continues on this path. <laughs> Dude, never mind. I'm gonna be quiet. I had this like <laughs> sick idea. Just know, just know. All I gotta say is, all I gotta say is, if when I get some money and I get some quote unquote status, right, dude, I have something for Arizona that'll like <laughs> that'll like that'll like be fucking spectacular. But I can't talk about right. it because I, I've only told my friends about it, like my close, close, close friends about it, and I was just like, dude, like you cannot tell anybody, like. So I, just, I, I, if I can get it, and it, and it matches, I, I'll just say this: it matches the theme 
of what I'm going to be going for in the next year or so. So it's going to be like, if I can get it, it's going to be like a, a power plus move. Like, you know, also more of a, of a an awareness thing, you know? Because it is like, just like Arnold Palmer, like did people, people knew Arnold Palmer, you know what I mean? But right. people like, you know, people like, I didn't know who Arnold Palmer was until right. I saw, you know, I knew Arnold Palmer, you know, half and half, you know. But I didn't know who Arnold Palmer was. Arizona was putting this info in the back of the can. And even with Jack Nicklaus, or however you say his name, with the Golden Bears, right. you know, they started talking about how he was an all-American all athlete and shit like this. And it's just like, oh, man, who is this guy? You know, it kind of puts you on knowledge. So imagine if someone up and coming, you know, like, but not necessarily up and coming, but big enough to the point where, you know, people will know who he is. And, but... I'm being promoted through gas stations. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> you know, but but still oh man, hold on. It's cool. But still, you know, something oh wow, my phone just died. I was using my phone's flashlight. Uh, no worries. I'm thinking <laughs> okay. for this one I'm gonna just use a picture of us because the video wasn't too good, so it's no worries. Oh man, okay, that sucks. I wish I had my charger. But you know, like just to have that, to go, just to go with the theme I'm going for, and then if people can have that to taste, you know, not necessarily, not just have or have it as some sort of sentiment of, you know, my success, but more so they can taste it. They can drink that while they're listening to my shit because right. it just makes sense <laughs> to, to, like, you know, like, because like if I can get if I can get this shit to pull off, you're going to be like, that just made sense. Like, you know, like, like the fact, like, CJ collaborating with Arizona and making this drink. Right. Just made sense. You know, and you're just going to be like, oh, my God, this is perfect. And then it's going to, but it, that itself enhances it. Because, you know, we all eat, eat sometimes when we do stuff. We drink sometimes when we listen to music. You know, if you have that, like, it's like drinking Shaq's Arizona while watching him play or watching him talk inside the NBA. It's like, ha, I have his drink. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's kind of cool. It's like, ha, you know, like when you, if you're drinking Ciroc while Rick Ross and Diddy are on TV talking about Ciroc, you're like, yeah, you know? <laughs> you're like, yeah, I'm drinking, I'm a Ciroc boy too. And that's the marketing thing of it. You know, because people are just like, man, fuck it, I want to drink what they're drinking. And, you know, and then when they, like, yeah, man, give me more Ciroc because Diddy said you know what I mean? But really, but, you know, I really want to do it with that. Something I actually give up. You care about. about. Right. Yeah, you know, and I like, and actually want to see them, like, succeed as a, as a company. You know, it just has an iconic beverage because I believe, like, I believe Arizona, like, because, you know, Arizona isn't Welch's. It isn't Bennett Made. It isn't Coca-Cola. Or, you know what I'm saying, it isn't one of these big name brands, but it's still heavy. You know? Right. It's still very relevant to our lives. Like, you know, just for, as far as kids on a budget, you know, just young adults on a budget and need something really good to drink. You know, when Arizona came out and Arizona started getting big in around, like, 06 to 0, right. 2010, when we started getting it, it's like, breakthrough just from social media and everything else, like... When pretty much when when it was quote unquote cool to drink Arizona, which used to piss me off, because I'm like, it's a drink, you know what I'm saying? Just drink it, you know. Talk about it in your songs, that's cool, but don't make it, you know, a, a matter of status just because you drink Arizona. Like you know, everyone's on Tumblr and Twitter with Arizona face. Oh, I'm drinking Arizona, you know what I'm saying? No one's like, no one's like drinking Deer Park, like how, like if I was going on, like, you know what I'm saying? Everyone's. Everyone, whenever people are drinking Arizona, they have to say, I'm drinking some Arizona. Oh, yeah, this Mucho Mango is so good right now. No one says, my, my, this Deer Park is putting you my thirst right now. Because that's why I should be tweeting, because this Deer Park is, in fact, putting you my thirst right now. But it's not Arizona. It's not cool. So people, you know, people are going to say that. I'm, and, and, and I'm serious. Like, I, I, like, I didn't know this was funny. a thing. It, it's funny, but it's like, it's just funny, because people... I feel like, whatever. My thing is, <laughs> Arizona is awesome, and, you know, it's really relevant, and I, and, I, and I really want something to do with it. Like, I don't care. Like, like and when everybody gets to them, if they see this interview, I have an idea. Yeah. I have an idea for you that will, that will fuck the game up. That's all I got to say. Because 
I see where these other brands are lacking. When I go to these gas stations, there's always something missing. It's a, it's a personal favorite of mine. And it's always missing at every gas station. I was like, dog, Arizona, please get to me before it's done. Right. Because because if, 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 if it'll go, if it goes down like that, like, it's going to be like, first of all, people are going to try it just because it's Arizona. Like these new Rickies, the Cherry right. Lines and the Mango Lines, the Green Lines. People just try it because it's Arizona. They don't really care. They just want to try it because it's Arizona. So I feel like if I did that with what I want to do, that people are trying it because it's Arizona and really like it and appreciate it, they're going to be like, oh, fuck. You know, it's just going to introduce a whole... Man, I'm not going to keep talking. Yeah, you got to say that. But we are about... so. I've been saying we're about to end, so I'm going to put the two questions in one. So this will be the last one. A, when are you going to be collaborating again with M Trey? We have, I have to ask that. And B, how since we've been talking about the idea of salvation and so forth, how are you finding peace now? Okay, I'll answer the like, as far as it, you know, I was just thinking about that thing before. Before you came, before we started this, I was just like, man, I'm going to hit up every trade real soon. I haven't talked to him in a while. You know what I'm saying? That's my man. That's my brother. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, just because, you know what I'm saying, he, real life and I deal with real life and we're all dealing with it in our own different ways. You know what I'm saying? You know, we haven't just haven't talked like that in a while. You know, it's not on some, it's not on some fuck shit where I'm just like, fuck him, man. He said this, he said this, and he's all like, I heard, oh, yeah, Trey was talking shit about you on the KTT. You know, no, it's nothing like that. Like, you know what I'm saying? That's my man. So I would, I would, you know, I would, you know, punch someone in the dick for that nigga. You know what I'm saying? Like, I really, you know, roundhouse kick somebody. You know, for real. That's my man. But I, I, I was just thinking, oh, man, I want to I wanna make some music with him again, like, really soon. Like, you know, like, I was just, just thinking about shit. I was like, man, you know, like, you know, because I'm not... I don't know, man. I just, I don't know. I'm going to say something but No, man, I just really want, I really want to, like, you know, that's one of my good friends. But I just really want to, you know, and me and him talked about it. I mean, we talked about this a long time ago, but this is all like some hypothetical struggling artist stuff that, you know, just struggling artists talking about. But I was like, dude, I want to, I want to work for hard and and be awesome and be great and just use everybody to what I really fuck with and what I listen to and what I, who the people out there, the, like, old brotherhood, you know, all of us, you know, just my friends that are around here, you know, like Brandon J, right. you know, or Al Kimo is really calling awesome himself and the reason and all of us, you know, he made all of us, man, like, we're all good as fuck and, like, you know, we're starting to get, you know, a little, you know, traction around here. Because usually, usually I was just solo, but, you know, but now that, you know, we're all together and bring it up, like, I really, I really, I'm really glad that people are listening to, you know, like, brand, I'm really glad people are listening to Brandon. I'm really glad people are listening to Nick. I'm really glad people are listening to the reason. I'm really glad people are listening to just because they're, they've been on songs with me or, you know what I'm saying, or I promote them and people say, oh, man, I like this song, you know, and I'm just getting, because I'm not necessarily, I, I wouldn't say, you know, oh, my fan base is ridiculous. It's not necessarily, you know, which it, it's, but, you know, I just have different people who listen to me than the people that they're used to, you know, listening to them, you know, as, as a point, because, you know, they, you know, because just being on KTT and having, like, and, and, and Kanye talking, Kanye live and having, like, you know, just, just random people, the people who are actually cool people, and we all, like, you know what I'm saying, like, me and you, man, like, me and you, Mark, you, you know, you know, you know this vibe, man, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, like, we all share stuff like that, and everyone's just like, like you know, and, and, and we all get to the point. Cause, like, think about it. Like, you, you're in the 2008 class of kids last stage, right? Right. Like, I feel like the thing is with everyone in there, everyone that's in that room, whenever they say something, any of y'all say something, I respect the fuck out of it. I always stop what I'm doing to read it. It's never on to, oh, you know, here's Ryan saying this, or here's Tisha saying this, you know. I actually, like, you know, take my time out of my day and read it, see what it's about, really get into it. Because, you know, we really respect, I feel like we all went up at each other on it and didn't respect each other's opinions. Right. As opposed to all the dumbasses who are, I'm saying. You know, like, and I would just like to, you know, show people, like, like you guys, that kind of music. 
you know, and hopefully y'all respect it, you know, coming from me, like, you know, I say, oh, man, you know, check this out, you know, and just give them, you know, and I know, like, people like y'all would be way more, you know, critiquing way more than people around here with, or people that, you know, are just around around the way, right. you know, so it'd it be able to help them out, you know, because it's like, okay, these are people that you do not know at all who well, listen to your music, like, you know, and, and trust me, like, these are my homies, they're honest, like, you know, if you're some shit, they will tell you they, you're bad, you know, or they will tell you what to work on, you know, but I like that, you know, like, just in general, so, I really, it, when it comes to the trailer, like, 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 I remember I was talking to him, I was like, oh, I really want to do that for all of us, so I would just like to show everybody all of our skills, but, but yeah, it's, okay, next segue, but um, as far as okay, ask the question one more time. So, like, exactly, because I'm trying to make sure I say it right. Right. The album was called Salvation, and usually the idea of salvation is that you try, you end up finding peace in So I guess now that, how are you finding peace now? Hmm. That makes it even more interesting because when I think of it like that, I say you know because. Making the music gave me peace, you know, during all that. And, you know, now that I'm back up here right now, just trying to figure out where the hell I'm going now, you know, um, it pretty, finding peace, like, just on a real-life basis, aside from making music, you know, I'm starting to incorporate meditation into my, into my living more, you know, in my life more. And, you know, I, I really like, it's really cool, like, got, like, people, like, reading the meditation is really sick, it's awesome, and it's like, for all the stuff that we talk about on Twitter or Facebook again, Tumblr or whatever the hell else, you know, all the shit that we're going through, like, that shit really helps. So, aside from making music, meditation helps a lot. Um, I'm reading it more, you know, I'm reading more books, like, I'm, you know, I'm trying to finish The Art of War right now, <laughs> like, wow. I'm like, it's it's a it's like it's one of those books that you know I, I saw it on Hey Arnold and I was just like huh, that book looks super boring, but you know one day I actually kind of like read a synopsis of it. I was like oh, you know what I may give it a try just to see, and you know I read that book and I was just like wow this is actually this is I'm reading it and I'm just like wow this is interesting because I can apply it in other aspects of life like for example you know there was this there was this one uh, aspect he said. I'm uh, sorry for drifting off, but, like, uh, that was one aspect he said, you know, he's like, get to, he's like, get to the battleground before your enemy does, so your enemy has to rush to you. But while they're rushing to you, you can catch them off guard, and you're already prepared. Shit like that, right? Right. You know, that translates into, like, should I do, like, making music, or even, you know, just saying, like, okay, you know, I'm going to try to do something like this now. I'm going to make music like this that I know will pop off soon or will have its little, like, quote, unquote, run or whatever, but make it super authentic. You know, it's like, you know, just like that, so that when it does come into, like, you know, into play, you know, when it really starts becoming, like, you know, like that shit I showed you, like, from Aloha Mahalo, right. like, I feel like that's going to be where hip-hop is going right now. Like, it's about to go to, like, a lot, a lot less dark and a lot, you know, but you know, it still has trap elements, so it appeals to everyone. But right. it's just it's peaceful enough to where you can vibe to it as opposed to, you know what I mean, really, you know, have a reason as all this ignorant, you know what I mean? So that's what I really wanted to go for, you know, just that aspect of the art of war, like and even you know, it's just being there, you know, being where the like Kevin Smith said or Wayne Gretzky's father said, like, get you know, Go to go to where the puck is going. Don't go to the puck. You know what I mean? Right. Like so that you know, if you're already there, you're already prepared to make that you know, that quick swipe into the goal. I suppose other people who are just trying to get there right now. So I want to and I shoot. I I use that playing basketball. I mean, I'm like, I'm like shoot. Get to the three point line now. So by the time your defender notices, this, you can have already squared up. Pull up. You know what I mean? Right. But. You know, just just stuff like that. Like the fact that stuff that knowledge like that is out there. You know, I, I feel like people should read more. I feel like people don't read enough, 
And I don't, and this is coming from someone I read, but I don't read as much as I should. But for, for, for someone who really likes reading, I think people don't read it up, man. Like, like, I feel like there's a lot of knowledge and a lot of ideas and there's a lot of aspects and different ways of living that people have created that we can really, you know, use for our lives, you know what I mean? To really help us, you know, in every aspect. Like, the Art of War is about, you know, some old Asian guy's perception on killing people the best way. You know what I'm saying? Like, killing a group of people the best way. You know, but the knowledge, the, 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 the not necessarily undertone, but the, the place where it's coming from. Right. You know, like, like this is like, you know, a commander saying this because he's thinking this. And he's thinking, you know, and that just goes to lead how, it goes to see, like, if this is how a commander thinks, how he leads his army, this is how I should think about life. You know, even, my, like, you know, you know, as a, not, not, you know, I'm not telling my rook to go here, my, you know, <laughs> and my bazooka man to go over here, but, you know, when I'm looking at life, I say, okay, this is where it's going to go, I'm going to do this, you know, the enemy is doing this, so, you know, take advantage of their, you know, you know, take advantage of, the, you know, attack from behind, you know, uh, shit like that, you know, like attacking from behind, or, I don't know, there's one thing, he's like, cause mayhem in the front, you know, like, like, show up to the battlefield, just cause complete mayhem in the front, like, just go crazy, you know, everyone's trying to, like, you know, but your position in the back already. So as they're, like, responding to the mayhem going on, running away, they would just kill off the, the weak ones in the back. You know right. what I mean? You can just kill them off and kill them off and, you know, really work your way up the middle. Because, you know, the, the strongest ones are going to be, you know, they may put the strongest ones in the back. You know what I'm saying? Or they may put them in the, on the front. Either way, you're hitting at all angles. I'm just like, right. you know, you got to hit people at all angles. When you, you know, I do this music shit. I gotta give. I gotta give them everything. We want. You know, like, but also, that is that is like a. I'm just doing this for. I'm just giving people what they want, but more like what I would want to hear on the album. You know, like this is what I want to hear on the album. I want to hear someone keep it happy, but keep it dark and make it. You know, bring it back and you know, sing a little bit. Like when I look at my music nowadays, I look at it as. You know, I consider myself a real artist now, like, you know, like a, like a really, you know, like, I consider myself, like, just seeing what I've done in the past couple of years, I see myself as someone who can really do this, and I, and when I listen to these rap albums, or these hip hop albums, or any kind of albums, I just say, man, I wish, I wish more of this is in there, and I hate that, cli- I don't want to sound like the cliche, oh man, I want, I want to make music that I like to hear, type shit, like, I really want, like, I really, I don't know, I, I really, I really am proud of my ear, to, to say. Right. I really, I really trust my, I feel like, my, like, you know, when I, when I, I feel like when I like something, I'm an elitist, I'm, I'm a musical, like, if, if, if I like something, and someone else doesn't like it, I think they're just, just complete shit and wrong. <laughs> but the thing is, a lot of people like me, what I usually have to offer, or, not even necessarily music I made. Music I showed them, like, hey, I think you should check this song out. Like, if I told you, I feel like if I told you a riff rap song right now that I really like, and I say, listen to this while you're really drunk one night. Just listen to it. You may like riff rap afterwards. You know? And for for the record, riff rap featuring Lil Debbie Brain Freeze. Listen to that while you're drunk one night. I bet you'll like it. All right. Because it's, it's, it's just stupid. But, you know, like, but, but people people are, are annoying because they'll listen to it on a, oh, man, this isn't lyrical. Even though Riff Raff was kind of saying some cool stuff, just get over the fact his cornrows are too tight and, you know, he, he looks like he's on coke. You know what I'm saying? Like, just just ignore it. Just kind of look at the video. Just just absorb the image. Soak in the image, you know. And, and you know, I, I just really want to make music like that hits every now and then the head as far as you know making an album goes like you know like just off of basic off of what i've shown you guys like my salvation i wanted to have the like, you know the hard trap songs i wanted to have the deep songs i wanted to have the fun songs i wanted to have the songs where i'm just singing or, or where i'm singing more on it you know i want to have you know i just want to hit every nail so you know nail unhammered i guess 
But you know, so that's what that's that's what I was going for, and I'm glad people took it that. Definitely, I want to say thank you for spending time with me tonight. Appreciate that. No problem, man. No problem. And dude, yeah. oh, never mind. I, I'll save that question. <laughs> okay, you know, I'm gonna ask now. What do you think of Travis Scott? You know, I have not listened to Travis Scott. I've been real slacking with music lately, so I can't even say. I mean, okay. I'll be even honest with you. I did not even hear a riff rap until like sometime this week. Oh, because he kept he kept he didn't hear about him at all. No, I've been so out of touch with music. Wow. Since like, when I say I've been out of like I've been finding new artists, but right. I haven't like following what's happening on the surface. Has been uh-huh. so, like I wouldn't be. I don't know what it is, but for I'm it's it's quite surprising that I do know that the Kanye album is dropping. Like <laughs> that's how big it, that's that's like that's how out of touch I am. Is like the fact that I know that the Kanye album is dropping is a big deal. Like otherwise, <laughs> it's I probably wouldn't have known had I stayed where I'm at. Like I when I like what what am I doing now? Like I've just got a record player. I've been buying old <laughs> LPs. Like I am not in 2013 right now. You say you're not about into what? I'm just not into. I'm barely in 2013. I have. I feel you. I, I can't even get Amazon to send me CDs to my place right now. So I'm 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 kind of struggling with that. Uh huh. Which is why I haven't gotten to copy a thing yet. Huh? No, that's why I even got to officially co- cop a hard copy of your thing because I'm just like, yo, how am I going to get it sent to my place? But <laughs> I mean, I feel you. I mean, like, I would agree. There's nothing really in 2013 that's blowing me away right now to where I'm like, oh, I'm going to give my undivided attention to it <laughs> because I, I, I'm I'm not out of touch with not, I'm not too out of touch with shit. As far as when it comes to the music stuff, like, you know, like, current music, like, you know, yeah. shit like Kanye, shit and J. Cole. But it's got to the point where, you know, I haven't listened to, I haven't listened to J. Cole to yours yet. Yeah. I, I really want to, I've heard a bit of pieces of it, it sounds pretty good, and, you know, um, Born Center sounds like it's going to be pretty good. But I just don't care. Not that I don't care about J. Cole. I'm, I'm going to buy the album because I'm going right. to be in stores on June 18th anyway. I'll bring $20 and I'll support, you know, Kanye and J. Cole. Right. So, but, you know, uh, aside from that, I really just been focused, you know, just, like, I would, not to my, my own shit, but it's life. Like, I really don't care yeah. who put out a new song. I, like, I don't give a fuck. Like, you know, yeah. like, because I know, like, you know, I'll listen to it every once in a while just to kind of just see what, 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 where is hip hop going right now? What, right. What's going on? You know, just to keep, you know, keep track of it, but, like, Fresh Montana, like, I, I find myself listening to Fresh Montana from time to time, but I hate myself on this story. <laughs> yeah, so some of them are pretty cool, but, you know, I just keep, I try to try to hear myself generally as well, just to hear where it's going, to hear where I can, you know what I'm saying? Like, I just study, I study, I study it silently just to see where it's at, where it's going, how right. I can improve on it, you know? Yeah, yeah I was supposed to listen to it because I actually give a shit. No, Kanye's the only person I give a shit about as far as she's not going to be And I have to, on an unrelated note, I do have to give props to Tyler because he shut me up with his album. I'm, I'm still not in love with him yet. But I haven't heard it yet. I haven't heard it I would, I would say particularly because of his production, I yeah. think you like it on a production level. Because that's what really impressed me because you talk about where is he going with the synths and the sound, like... Yeah. He, he 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 came to play. Like I lyrically I'm not a Tyler fan, but I was just like, yo, you came to play production level. I when you decide to say but I can't be a kid forever, I'm willing to see what you do from there. But he brought his A game and I think you should check it out just to kind of see what yeah. what type of sounds he's playing with. Yeah, I heard uh I heard bits and pieces of it, just how it was going and I'm just, like you know, just how just that groove and like that. It's like it's like it's like Pharrell. It's like when Pharrell first came out, he used it like the clads and like the you know like uh, just those like really robotic dry ass synths. Right. But he just made them like you know fucking awesome with like hard ass electronic drums like the, uh, you know like those distorted those right. distorted kicks 
and like those weird ass snares. You know what I mean? Like it would be so sick, and it'd be like uh, I really like it. I, I like I like Tyler's sound. Like you know, it's just more so like his come up. Like I no, I, I like I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a fan of Tyler, but it was, but you know at that point in time, I was more I was like, damn, this guy's my age, <laughs> you know. And it's like his name is Tyler, the creator. I'm CJ. In the Genesis. <laughs> You know, and it's essentially on, you know, the same format. His his real name, uh, <laughs> and something to do with you know starting something. You know, so I'm like, okay, now this looks weird. You know, and yeah. then like my age, and then I didn't even like, realize really that. Huh? I didn't even catch that. Yeah, like that's how like, I'm like, damn, now, but because I remember, I remember when, did you see when someone posted an post on on Hype Beast? No. Uh, no, not and it wasn't not, not on the front page. It was like. Some small thread that someone posted in like you know the music session on Hypebeats, and someone was like CJ the Genesis really. And this is around when <laughs> Our Future was coming out. I was like, oh my god! Like it's I was like it's so, I was like, I've always been CJ the Genesis man. Like I'm not I'm not hopping on to his wave or anything like that. No, this is who I am. Like you know this is me. So it just really pissed me off. But I really have a lot of respect for the kid and. In fact, he's really working with his heroes. Like he works with fucking Pharrell. Like he worked and like he, he's worked with Kanye. And like like dog, that, that's a fucking he, like Jay Z invited him to his house. All of them to his house. Like that's crazy. That's crazy. Frank Ocean works with Beyonce. Like that's fucking crazy. Like Frank Ocean was just you know nostalgia ultra with a group of you know say wild ass kids who quote unquote weren't gonna be shit. You know what I'm saying? But they're really just shitting on a lot of people right now. It's just like, it's fucking cool. Like, just to see someone my age doing it, which makes me even more excited for it. So it's less, you know, of a, oh man, you know, he's my age and he's doing it. I wish I would. If he's doing it, I can do it too, type shit. You know, and it's, and it's just, it's just really cool to see it. So I, I already know his, his production is A1 on it. Like, because he's always had good production, regardless of. It's his rapping that kind of annoys me sometimes, but it's good. It's good. No, rapping. it is. I, I, I don't want you to get the impression I don't think that. It's just I got mixed feelings at times. So. I feel, you know, I feel because I, I'm glad he's gotten to a point where it's less shock value and more meaning. You know, right? And that, and that was my one concern with him. I was like, I'm going to kind of back away from this because I feel like if all they're talking about it is, you know fuck this shit up, and I'm not saying that that's wrong, but, you know, right. if they can't make it any more artistic or any type of, any more articulate or just, you know, just just a different subject, like, talk about some real shit, tell me about your life, you know what I mean, like, right. but, you know, still tell, like, you know, that's why I think, I feel like Tyler excelled at, because he really told about his life in a way that someone our age would tell, you know, if they were, a, if, if they were, like, a skateboarder kid who's whose father left, and this is how they felt really about it, you know, and he just shows out because he just longs for his father's attention, but he says he hates him, and he'll kill him, right. but you know what I'm saying, I like that, I like that psychological shit, you know, because it's like, damn, like, this is what he really goes through, you know, like, he's doing his thing, he's, he's really, he's probably generally happy, but you know, he has his chip on his shoulder, right. and you know, like, because he, he always talks about his father, he always talks about this and that. That they're, you know, so it's, it's cool to see, you know, see how he deals with it. So I guess it, I guess it, you know, really meant a lot to him. So, for a lot of people. So I like that, but, you know, when he's talking about Storm Coke and shit like that, when he's, when he's fucking, uh, clean cut, you know, he's a straight edge, I mean. Yeah. Doesn't drink, doesn't smoke, doesn't do anything. And that's cool, man. That's one cool shit. This industry. Like I, I'd be surprised. I, it's not surprising that someone that age, because all of his friends go, all the, you know what I'm saying. So and it's like I get it, I understand, but you know, it's just, it's just crazy that he's he's that. You know, he's really following for real. He's really can be the next for real if he learns how to sing or something. Right. So I think this wraps it up. I still got to beat you in a game of Smash, but I don't have a GameCube or a oh, working TV. God. But I can tell you, I don't know if you got a 3DS yet, no. but we'll settle that score sooner or later. Yeah, Marcus, Marcus. 
I have been busting ass lately. That's why I'm going to say. People have been coming over here, talking that good noise, so they can be with Smash Brothers. And they, never, they, don't, they don't even leave without... They leave without winning one match. All right. Like, and I think mean, 10 matches, like, don't win one. Nah, no man. weapons. No nope. final destination. Like, with this, I, I get to it. And I practice now. It's because I know people are flying. <laughs> So, so when the new Smash comes out, and whenever, if I get a Wii U or if you got a 3DS, we, we'll settle that score. But I'm glad we. Time for E3? I have. I'm in between, like, because I, like, I don't. I guess this is funny because it's going to end up in the interview me talking about what's happened. But <laughs> I, I let when I left New York, I gave away all my video game systems, like. My ex has my DS, my two of my clo- three of my friends, my friend Mikael has my PS2, my other friend has my Super Nintendo, my other friend has my GameCube. I left, and the only thing I have here is my Game Boy Advance, and I beat everything on my Game Boy Advance, except for Final Fantasy 1, because that's just evil as hell. And I'm just like, yo, I'm still fiending to play video games again. I thought I was done. And I- First of all, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> Wait, why, wait, no, I'm not, I'm not even going to get into your business. Because, you know, I'm pretty sure you did it for a good reason. You know what I'm saying? But, dog, if you need some Game Boy Advance games, I got a bunch of Mega Mans. I got a few Dragon Ball Z games. I got a Sonic game. And I think I have Final Fantasy Tactics. I can send you something, you know what I'm saying? It, it ties you over, man. If you need it, I'm dead serious. All right, let's get, let's get that done. Let's get that done. All right, that's a bet. <laughs> Matter of fact, when when you when you when you when you order a copy of Salvation and when you when I send it to you, I'll send you another one like right behind it like that. It's gonna be heavier, so it may take an extra day or a couple okay. hours. But I'm but I'm gonna send you one right after that. I'm like you know, don't even worry about shipping. I'll take care of it. I don't know because I have a job now, so, I'm cool. I'm, I'm a, so I'll figure it out. And I'm gonna see that shit. You gonna fuck with it? No, so I'm I'm excited, but I'm just like right now. I'm no, I'm not getting anything. Immediate, like. Oh yeah, yeah, me neither. Like, all I <laughs> want to see really is the new, the new game called X, which is supposed to be Xenoblade Two. I'm just like, yo, yeah. if that looks as dope as it does, I'm gonna just buy a Nintendo system and go broke soon. With the, the Wii U? Yeah, I mean, what? I don't, I don't know about the Wii U, man. I really, I really want to get it because I, you know I'm a Nintendo freak, but yeah. I don't know, man. It, it has, it needs to give me something else. No. Check out X, because X looks freaking awesome. I mean, what by this year, what you're gonna get the new Mario Kart, you're gonna get the okay. new, you're gonna get the new 3D Mario. They're okay. doing the Fire Emblem Cross Shin Megami Tensei. Oh you, my you're getting Wonderful 101, Pikmin 3. That's kind of like for me. That's all okay. I really need. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty sick. And a possibility of a new Smash Brothers. They're gonna supposed to show that too. So like. Oh, I'm goodness. not even. I'm not even like. I'm not even mad right now at that. But that makes sense. You know what? I was thinking about saving up some money to get this Xbox. Right. I don't have. I, I, all I have is a Nintendo system. So you know what I'm saying. I really. I really want to get into the Xbox game more, the PlayStation games more. This is explore maybe PS3. Yeah. PS3 has some sick games on there. The graphics are incredible. But. Like, I might mess around and get a Wii U. It's going to be a little bit, though. It's going to be, like, I would need, like, a year. No, I mean, I'm with you on that. Because I'm at the same place where you are. Because I was like, I almost think I should get a PS3 just to, to buy the HD collections of PS2 games. <laughs> That's what... Yeah. <laughs> well, are the new PS3s not backwards compatible? The PS3 isn't backwards compatible, which is annoying. It's just like... Yeah, the old one is, though. The, the old, old one, one, but that's, like, going for 500 Really? 500? The old PS3s, which are 60 gigs, and that, that are back to all co- compatible? Serious. Dude, I, I might just make that move. I might, like, no, I, I don't know. I might just get You know what? If anything, I will get, if I really want to play PS2, and if I, if I can afford it, I would just, like, buy all my Amazon. Yeah. But, you know, one of those $80 ones, or $60 ones, and, you know, just kind of go about it from there and then just, you know, just get games off of Amazon and, and eBay and stuff. 
No. Those are still legit sources for like anything ever. <laughs> so, you know, I might check that out, but I don't know. I think I might get a PS3 or an Xbox. Possibly Xbox just so I can play my 2K and my Call of Duty. Because right. even though those games are repetitive as hell, as opposed to Mario and Donkey Kong, when everyone tries to talk about it and say, oh, you know, Call of Duty is better, but it, Call of Duty is repetitive as hell. You know, I just, I just like these games. You know, like, uh, what was I like, I, I love 2K. Like, I've been, I've, oh, I've been undefeated in 2K for the past week and a half. Nobody wants to be the Thunder right now. <laughs> Nobody wants to be the thunder right now. I can shoot threes at everybody, except for Ibaka and Perkins. <laughs> but let me get the red hot, and I have I have basketball IQ, so I will break you down. That's all I gotta say to anybody who wants to take it right now. How I feel right now? I might lose this week, but whatever. I've been like twelve and up this week, so I'm, I'm gonna run with it. So, any last words? I feel like we covered possibly everything we could cover. Everything could. ever. <laughs> uh, last words um, Oh shit Oh that's a shadow I was like oh shit what's wrong with me Anyway um, Last words I'm going to say Brotherhood was good um, Look out for everyone In the Brotherhood's project I feel like Rick Ross I want to say look out for Salvation videos I'm trying to work out The fucking Technicalities and all that shit now, you know. Uh, look out for the Hopper Hollow. Guy, uh, disclaimer, guys. I think it, that's going to be it. The Hopper Hollow. I think it's. I think it's, it's. I'm just telling you, it's going to be awesome. And you know, new website coming soon. Videos coming soon. Uh, you know, maybe some more photos, shit coming soon. Just more stuff is coming soon. I just I just got a job. So. Uh. That didn't lead me to one last question. Wow, this, I'm a horrible interviewer. <laughs> why, is, why isn't Salvation on Bandcamp? Huh, good question. This computer I'm on, this computer I'm on, the one I'm on daily, right. it, I don't know why, but it won't upload on there. Okay. On this. Now, I don't, eventually what I'm going to have to do is, you know, use one of my first computers right. and put it on Bandcamp just so it's there. Because, I don't know, I, I feel like because the night I was trying to put it up and, you know, have it, you know, for like that whole week before, I had been trying to upload it on Bandcamp and it just wasn't working. So I was just like, whatever, like, I just made a SoundCloud. I just wanted to, I, I'd rather promote my SoundCloud more right now. You know? Right. You know, just to get more followers on there and, you know, extend my reach on SoundCloud as opposed to Bandcamp. But right. just because Bandcamp isn't interactive, you know, like, I can go on SoundCloud and, you know, comment on people's shit, you know, right. it's like a, it's like a music social media, like, so, I, I feel like I gotta get some, I feel like SoundCloud's gonna, you know, really, really pop off, so, I wanna make sure my presence on there is, you know, is, is known, cause if I put it up on Bandcamp tonight, no one's gonna know when I put it up, <laughs> you know, like, if somebody wanted to listen tomorrow, like, you know, they would know, oh, he put it up last night, right, as opposed to SoundCloud, I said this two months ago, you know, so, yeah, that's what I'm trying to go for. All right, man. Again, thanks. And hopefully, this will take a little bit of rendering to do because we really <laughs> went. We went for we're an hour and a half, man. Are you serious? Yeah. So <laughs> it'll be a little while before this gets so probably thanks. up this yeah. weekend. But I'm glad we got to talk a lot, man. I appreciate it. Well, you can put it in parts. You can put it like uh, five parts or six parts. That's true. Although I don't necessarily, I'm cute. Although people aren't like me when I'm on, on YouTube. I like I like long videos that are like twenty, yeah. thirty minutes hour. Me too. Me too. So I was yeah. like, I'm putting this up. Really like like the Breakfast Club interviews. <laughs> I love those twenty minute long videos. So that like, shit, you actually watch your battles, battle videos, and they're like forty five minutes long. It's so awesome. Like, it's like a movie. Exactly. So I don't know if I want to cut this up. I don't know. Well, but, good. Uh, either way, either way, uh, either way, I'm down with it. Because uh, as an enthusiast of longer videos <laughs> that are like, especially like interviews, because yeah. you really, you know, 
you know, some interviews are just like, yeah, man, this is five minutes. I'm about to just wrap this interview up real quick, you know what I'm saying, and get back to fucking these bitches and go and drink <laughs> popping bottles in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Like, I like interviews like this because it's like we really talk, you know, like, obviously, you know what I'm saying, I set aside everything I was doing, you set aside everything you were doing because we respect one another to say, fuck it, let's talk, you know what I'm saying? Let's right. talk to these things. You know, it's not like you're some random person that's just like, hey, man, I want to interview. It's like, no, Marky's going to ask me some good-ass questions. I'm going to be ready, and I'm going to be prepared, and I know we're going to talk, because it's like, I ramble. <laughs> <Definitely>. <laughs> I was like, I was like, I was like, well, like everyone has to see it, though. It's going to be cool. Definitely. The only thing you're going to have to do is send me a picture so I can do some quick editing to throw this up, because I said video wasn't too good. But okay. Thank you again, man. Have a good night. <laughs> and hopefully, too, hopefully we get to see each other in the summer in the reels. Hell yeah! Shit, if I if I can be up in Towson this semester, oh yeah, oh yeah. All right. And I ha- and I don't have my car up there, so oh yeah. All right, man. Oh yeah. Exactly. Yeah, man. Take it easy, brother. I love you, man. Thank you. No problem. Much love, man. I appreciate it. It's, it's usual. <laughs> no problem, brother. Peace. Peace. <laughs> I'm <laughs>